jump in here. Joe, would you like to... Take us through the pregame while you yeah, set us up with exactly. some bomb overlays to yes. hide summoner spells? Do it. There it is. Absolutely. Bam. Brand new technology. Check it. All right, so this is Highwind here. And uh, going to jump right into picks and bands. Uh, with 10 seconds left, we have yet to see our first band. And there goes Ari. Who I think going forward, I'm going to ban all the time. Until she gets nerfed. Actually, I'm at Elo. Never mind. <laughs> VV so Gaming, you would love to co-cast with us? Well, we would love to co-cast with you sometime. Uh, when, uh, if we had, see, if we had Highwind over here, we could dual cast from our setup and then have you hop in on Skype. Um, what kind of things are you thinking about doing? Like casting these games with us, maybe? Let us know in chat. But anyways, take it away, Highwind. Keep going. No, I was just going to say, uh, Nidalee and Shaco has been banned. So, Arcraft, who was, was played three straight games of Shaco, <laughs> uh, will have to play something else this game. I wouldn't be shocked to see a... Ri <clears throat> <laughs> Looks like uh, Nidalee, Shaco, Ramus with the bans, Ari, Zareth, and Cassidy for VVV. First pick, going to be Graves off the board. I feel like Graves is probably my favorite ranged AD. Um, fun to play. I think he's great at all ELOs. And probably... Um, the more skilled you are, the more technical at positioning, uh, the better he is. And so, in, I mean, he doesn't have like a really low skill ceiling. I mean, it, it go. It, I think it scales pretty well. So most players can pick him up, use him, enjoy him, have fun, have success. And then the, the top players are just, I mean, you can dominate. Uh, but you know that's that you could say that about any champion. Uh, there's a lot of good players out there in the. I mean, the people, everybody in this game right here was what 1800, 1900. Some of them were 2K. I yep. mean, that's the what top three percent North American servers. So I mean, I mean these guys are. You know, if this were World of Warcraft, these would be your server first. You know, guilds. And <laughs> these are your guys that are going through and doing all the hard content. They have put their time in the game. You know, and what they come away with is some skill. Um, and, and it's for me, you know, for someone like me, I enjoy spectating these games and these matches. That's why I like casting and giving my commentary. But just to talk a little bit more about the picks, um, they, uh, they wield, uh, with Morgana and Soraka. So I think they've had Soraka almost every game. And meanwhile, the other team went Sona, Skarner, looks like Trindamir up top. I mean, I think we're going to see a ribbon. We could. I mean, I think uh, I think it's a definite pick for Still Soul, but I, I think now we're going to see a maybe oh, okay. okay. Pump fake into ribbon. But Graves, you know, Graves is really, really, really. Uh, the reason he's a good pick is he has really good tankiness from his passive, plus he has a dash to keep him away, and for, I think, a lot of AD players, he's easier to play because he's more spellcaster-ish and less just straight AD, because he has lots of burst kind of abilities, and he's pretty aggressive, but just kind of combined with his tankiness, I think he just that just naturally lends himself to being a strong pick. And might see a Lee Sin jungle here, which I would actually really like to see from them. Uh, they finally banned the Shaco, but Lee Sin is a really good replacement, has really strong ganks as well. And he, we won't be able to see the same fancy blue-red buff simultaneous uh, shenanigans with Shaco, but we're still going to see a lot of really good early ganks, possibly. And for our last pick... 
Oh man, we're definitely gonna want. To, well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna see. I think it's Sivir or Trist Tristan. I'm probably gonna think Sivir. Uh, actually, against Graves, you probably want some of that more hybrid damage. Start Quirky, um, Kogma. Haven't seen much of Kogma lately, but I would probably see something more of a hybrid just because the passive between Graves is. Uh, I mean, his it gets like 40 armor. Yeah. So, I mean, he just has a ton of just ridiculously mitigation from your damage reduction from just that his passive. But if you get someone like a Kogma or um, a Corky, who does actually a lot of their early damage, it comes across as magic. It it works out pretty well. I like Vane or Vane. That's um, actually what I was gonna say. And there she is, because she is the best true damage hero of anyone, best scaling one. Um, pretty good. Uh, counter to uh graves just because she does have a role as well and if once once she's in the lead if you're trying to run away from her there's just no escape it's like once she has the advantage if you're if you think in your mind oh i'm gonna try to run away chances are you're probably gonna die anyways so you have to pick your your positions and your fights very very uh carefully we're playing against her and by the way uh to any vv people in there and shout out to uh live vv gaming um if you want to cast with us next game, if your team goes to the finals and we're allowed to cast it, you will definitely be invited to cast if we can get you in there. My uh, early uh, common, uh, color commentary, if you like, tell us a little bit behind the players, what's going on with your team, uh, promote your sponsors, all that good stuff. Which, if you haven't had a chance, go check out uh, vvv-gaming.com. I really like both teams right now. Um, we're going to see Mega Zero on Trindamir. And, uh... The Cassiopeia should be a good pick uh, against Morgana in mid. And I'm super excited to see Sil Soul on Riven again. Yeah, everyone in uh, oh, we can actually show the summer spells now as well. You can remove the overlays, but everybody that's in chat, uh, go check out that link from VV Gaming. Um, they're super awesome, and their team's super awesome for letting us uh, cast and stream them through GoForLol number forty-five. So, go give them a, a look. See, this is the actually the brand new structure uh, restructured VBV team. Yeah, fresh off the factory line. So far, I like what they've done. I actually agree, Riven. And knowing Silsoul, he's a very, very good player. But Mega Zero, you know, I haven't seen him play. In a, I haven't seen Mega Zero play in a while, but I, I, I've i played against him. I know he's pretty good. So yeah, I like both lineups. Um, I like Double Diamond back on uh, Morgana. I think that's a very strong pick. Uh, it's a good pick against Cassiopeia. Um, Cassiopeia, very, very strong laner. I'm interested to see that matchup. Very, very intrigued by that. And uh, I'm interested to see Arcraft play something other than Shaco and that shenanigan OP house that he is. And Scarred is, you know, scarner has been very strong. He's been very strong in the teams that are ahead, but the teams that are behind, he's not a really big factor, so... I wish to see yeah. if the Skyner can step up, show me something. I mean, if, if if you guys remember Warwick way back in the day, I mean, Warwick was like, hey, if you're ahead, Warwick was godlike. Yeah, godlike. And now Warwick, he's not he's not exi exactly flavor of the month in terms of your jungle. He's just not as fast as some of the, the current junglers. I think he's still pretty good. But Skyner is just like the the faster, safer version. Like, And he still suffers from that same problem, which is, if you're behind, all he becomes is a suppress bot. Uh, but if you're ahead, he can absolutely just ruffle stomp into your team, slow them, and he's you know he's he's unkillable. He'll just suppress your AD carry or whoever your squishiest person, pull them out, pop them. 
Yeah. Realm. And I mean, the difference is, though, is that, you know, Skarner has the potential to pull someone as opposed to just hold them in place. But at the same time, um, he doesn't quite have the stacking damage that Warwick has. But I think the main reason Warwick has fallen off also as well is that Warwick in the old jungle used to be the easy choice. Like, you could play Warwick in the jungle and you were going to be safe because the jungle was a little bit hard. You had to have your summoner spells correct, set up correctly, so on and so forth. And now, that's kind of out the window. It's not, it's not the same environment anymore with the new jungle that's a lot easier to jungle and so you can play these other characters a lot safer and they're a lot quicker because they have aoe where warwick doesn't have aoe because i mean that's the common theme between a lot of the 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 current meta for junglers is they all have either a mobility plus uh an aoe uh damage ability that lets them clear creep uh the jungle really really fast as well so if they don't have a lot of gank opportunities, they can also clear jungle really quick. And here we are. It's going to start off. VV Gaming again at the bottom. I'm going to start off really, really quick here. Still so much to have a script that buys this items for him. Uh, <laughs> His one Dorn's Blade. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, bam. Uh, also, you can check out a program. I forget the name of it. It's slipping my mind. Anybody in chat, if you know it, there is a program that lets you set up your... You can change your items and set up... Uh, you have custom items. I haven't used it in a long time. I haven't. I, I know people were posting on it uh, in our internal Google chat to check it out, but uh, that is another option if you want to have really quick starts instead of searching out all your stuff. I know for supports it really, really helps because searching out a Mechie Pendant plus uh, or Fairy Charm plus uh, three wards and a pot is, takes a little bit of time as opposed to just like grabbing a one item of Doran's Blade or Boots and three pots or something like that. Really heavy invade by uh, VV Gaming here. They really want. They really want to steal red. I think. It's a great call. I mean, Skarn is usually a four-minute, ten-second ganker. He'll clear his force. I grab see, a. I want to see uh, them do the smart thing, and Blue's actually going to teleport back and walk up this bottom lane. Which anybody that plays top, if you're top down here or your bottom. And you ever move forward in the jungle, or even if you just have to cross like from here to here, it's even dangerous to run in here and around, or even around this area, just because a team could camp five here. So it's always the safest bet you have if you're a player is to blue pill all the way back and then uh, run up the lane. Very especially common if you're top, and Trinimir is going to run into a world of hurt here. Oh, there's the shackle. Maybe seeing knight here. Tons of damage. The trimmer's gone, and that is why you blue pill. That's what I was talking about. Mega Zero, you're old school enough. You should know this. Go you blue pill back to base, and then walk up the lane. And you know, there's an early gold advantage now for uh, for VVV Gaming, starting off on the right foot. And uh, Morgana's actually going to pick up that kill. And so, like uh, the chat was talking about, Riven. If Riven gains a little bit of advantage on a uh, Trimmer, she can wreck him, and you know she's going to get a little bit of that advantage now. She has a uh, support gold plus some extra experience. So she's going to go to land a little bit ahead. And this bottom lane is going to be interesting. Um, it's not quite as punishable lane. Uh, Vayne can be really. I mean, there's a lot of good poke here and uh, the true damage, but there's no hard stun from Sona, so. The vein scary like Targ vein play is not gonna not gonna appear, but as you can see, as we've seen all day, these are the two common supports uh, that you will see. Just because their heals are still in, their heals are very still intact, and the reason you see a lot of Soraka is because she has eventually at level six she has three heals combined with team heal, and then on top of that she's a mana battery, so your carry is always gonna have mana, and that's her slight advantage over Sona. Sona, you're gonna get more poke out of her. Can't wait for the J four uh, Leona. <laughs> the, the goose gaming uh, lineup yeah. <laughs> but yeah Lee Sin just doing a really quick run around and you see this early war by Mega Zero very smart he knows that uh, Lee Sin's going to be in his jungle trying to go for early yanks so early wards are very very smart Skarner with double buff yeah uh, but look they have a war at this tri bush so they're going to see this Will they, they react right away Soraka waiting a little bit she's probably going to end up having to flash over this maybe to get away yeah. now she's going to be able to just walk out good play Good play, but very good ward actually. Um, a lot of times, people ward farther up in the river, maybe near Dragon. But uh, in this case, warded their own tribush. Very smart. And uh, Team BG9 is actually going to uh, ward the tribush as well to ward against uh, Lee Sin Ganks.
I think the game has changed a little bit too over the time. Uh, we've seen a lot more in, uh, people get smarter at warding, when to ward. We've seen clairvoyance change the game too when CV was used a lot more, uh, CVing junglers, which actually is out of style now. No one, everybody takes flash he- team heal because it's just that good. But I mean, even that meta of just people just come better at map awareness. I think when the game first was young, uh, map awareness wasn't as good. You'd see more ganks on bottom, and now that has shifted away to more ward control top and ward control in the jungle, and then ganks on mid and top. And bottoms just become a uh, like is our is our support uh, AD better than your support AD setup? Or you might see a little a sneak up through the jungle brush. And Lee Sin is going to come up, but if they if they were paying attention, they will notice that Lee Sin uh, was coming up through that tri brush. Srock are going to move up, probably put a ward Skarner's around Dragon. Gonna go up and gank on Sil Sol. Yeah, and lots of slows, and uh, she's going to try to use her hops to get away, but she's not going to do it. Good move by Mega Zero moving in there. Great flash. A little overkill there to add that last little hit on there, but they will pick up Sil Sol, and, you know, that's kind of Sil Sol's one little weakness. So good move actually by uh good good move now by BG9 picking up a kill gold's about even now slight uh creep farm advantages for VV gaming at this point pretty much making up the difference that in the first blood By yeah, the way, the board, it's, it's, I mean, it's really even. Yes. See, Morgana went back. She came back with three Doran's rings. And then uh, Cassiopeia is going to follow up with two Doran's rings and uh, fill out some pots right there. The three Doran's ring is really, it's just, I mean, you can't build them into anything, but it gives you a good amount of AP, gives you... Uh, health and then uh, it gives you uh, some mana regen so you can sustain lane and really it's like a mini uh, rod of ages if you're familiar with that item it's a m- gives you mana and health over time and AP over time builds out of a catalyst and now actually has a catalyst effect but Silso needs a ward uh, <laughs> Silso needs a ward top I mean if you're a top solo you need to build wards and now he's moved out a little bit too far He's going to turn around, stick in through the chicken. Nope, chicken's going to come off as he runs away, and he should be able to escape out of this. Scar doesn't have a level 6 to grab him out. But he does need a ward up here at some point. As you can see, uh, V's being pushed bottom. Morgana coming up here with a Lee Sin. Are they going to pick up? Oh, oh, Jukes back, dodges that shackle, and that was actually really huge. If he would have been shackled, I think he would have been in a lot of trouble, but now he should be able to escape out of this. Morgana's actually going to pop her ult, flash after, make sure she lands it. Riven's going to come in here, Sosa's going to pick up the kill, and now it's all up to Trinderman trying to get out of this, but he is level 6, so they shouldn't focus him. He can pop that ult and escape easily. Cassiopeia late to the party, realized that was missing way too late. So good commitment on that, good for Sosa coming up there and able to pick up that kill. And now I think they're going to go over here and try to steal red. Uh, Trix senses this out. Good good use of the purple miasma. That that allows him to get vision of that brush so they're not able to camp there for him. Dodges that shackle. Very smart play. Reading his opponents very well. Very impressed by Trix's Cassiopeia play right now. I mean, this is a dangerous matchup, and I'd like to see more veins. We haven't seen a lot of... I don't know if we've seen that many vein bans. Have we seen a lot of vein bans today? Uh, no, I think maybe just one. Because, I mean, really, when you're playing, oh, 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 so much damage. There's that burst caster type damage from uh, Graves right there. Almost kills Sona. Sona out of mana at this point. She might need to think about backing pretty soon. But that's what you have to be afraid of when you play against the Graves. But, I mean, the the fact of the matter is is that he has that uh, defensive buff, but he doesn't sustain very well through true damage. And so you can't... Uh, Vayne is a good counter-aggressive uh, play to a Graves. So as we approach uh, the 9, 10-minute mark, we'll probably see the teams prep for Dragon. Uh, Skarner just at hit 6, so he might be going for a gank after red. Yes, definitely, and they are pinging Lee Sin coming down. They do know that Skarner is at red. Morgana's going to round this corner. Now, will she land her shackle? That is the key. 
Double the oh, she's gonna that oh, that's the smart play. The shackle, yeah, if you miss this shackle, you are fired. <laughs> that is how that works. And Skarner's trying to run away. If I was Skarner, oh, he's gonna barely escape this great all actually by Cassiopeia poison picking up Lee Sin at this point. Now they're gonna chase down Morgana. Morgana in a lot of trouble now. Run up through the bushes. She is pretty much dead if they can just track her down here. Riven trying to slow down as much as possible. Turn around to Shackle. Misses the Shackle double diamond. No. Stop missing Shackles. Skarner going to come back and pick this up. And everybody's so low. Can Silsil pick up these kills? Mega Zero popping his ult. He has to be really careful. He's going to turn around. Try to get Cassiopeia. Doesn't have enough to get it. Mega Zero's ult is gone, but he's going to pop his heal from his passive. And oh, the creeps are going to pick up Trixie. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Silso, okay, now he, he, they don't have vision of Silso. He can turn around and make something happen possibly here, but I think he's just going to run, try to avoid the crits, just stay alive, keep his blue buff. That blue buff is huge. And he is going to stay away from here. <laughs> Great little fight there <laughs> by uh, Team VV Gaming and uh, uh, BG9. Meanwhile, Bottom just, uh, yeah, we're doing our thing, you know. Tune to your regular scheduled uh, nature channel. Oh man, that Good. was some excellent kiting. Yeah, you know, a lot of positioning, a lot of like min maxing of every little bit of damage. Yeah, and I mean Skarner coming in there for that last little hit of Morgana. Oh, I mean, I I think it's pretty. I don't know, double diamond though. He's killing me with the shackle. Like if he lands that shackle, it's so pro, and then he misses, and it's just so like no. You had a chance. But very good kiting by both teams. Great positional play. And like you said, min maxing. Maxing damage potential and defensive potential and life potential. And now they're gonna bring three people in to make sure that Skarner gets this red. That's what it appears. And they already and they placed a ward here above Baron. I mean that's how concerned they are with it. And you know, that's what smart teams will do. They go, like, Hey, you know what, we, we how do we make sure this doesn't happen again? And they go, Alright, let's put a ward there, let's commit uh, like seventy five gold to it. And, uh, you know, just shade some people that way just to make sure. And, you know, smart play. It's better to make sure than not. And I like this ward placement actually better than the, the middle ward placements that we see by a lot of people uh, from a VV Gaming. So now that skarner has got blue and red, he's probably going to make his rounds towards bot lane. And he's going to want to try and pull a game. Leeson actually sneaking into a bush here. But he's spotted out because of this lower ward. Yeah. Lower ward's very good. Morgana running away from the Skarner. Spots him crossing with that ward. ward. Keeping him out of their jungle. Very smart play by Double Diamond. Does it want to give up jungle creep to the enemy? Game is super, super even. It doesn't get more even than 14.4k to 14.4k and 3 to 3 in kills. I'm sorry, but... This game is even as you get both teams very evenly matched, very solid play by both teams, and so we should have a really, really good game here. Possibly one of the better games of Go for a Little right now. Skarner Grace slightly ahead in the creep stat race. Let me see Skarner moving up here, stealing some jungle. Trinity are taking lots of damage. Now that is the key to uh, very good Trinity players is uh, you know patience on your alt. You know when. When to save your ult and keep it, and Riven's going to get dragged back into the enemy team. Take tons of oh, damage from Trinamere. Will she be able to escape? Leeson trying to come in, trying to heal, her te heal his teammate and get out of there, but now he's in trouble, and he's probably going to go down. No wards to jump to, and they're actually going to up two kills now. VV Gaming, unfortunate turn of events there. Cassiopeia rounding out just in case. But on the flip side, we have a big, huge push past the turret bottom. Morgana coming in and able to kill Vayne. So while all that went down... Uh, VV Gaming able to pick up a kill back at the other side, and work oh my gosh, Sona actually shackled at turret, and she's going to go for sure down. Gray is coming in, almost getting max damage out of that burst, but goes a little bit too wide with it, and they're going to be able to pick up a kill. So two kills for two kills. Uh, I foresee Trinimer putting a lot of damage onto this turret, though. Cassiopeia and Skarner turning around as well, trying to press this mid turret as well. Gives you tons of gold. VV Gaming in a quick race now, trying to clear creep waves and kill bottom turret. Both teams very aggressive, trading kills back and forth. I mean, this is what League of Legends is all about. Getting pretty exciting right now. We're going to have another skirmish here at the blue Yeah, ball. BG9 wants blue. Still Soul says no. I'll take you on 1v3. Oh, wait, crap. I didn't know it was 1v3. <laughs> Backing out real quick. Giving Lee Sin. But we know how this ended last time. So not doesn't look very good for him. Trinimir can chase this if he wants to. Really nice heal. Great Cassiopeia ult, but it's a little bit too late. Cassiopeia 
Gonna be able to escape out of this, but I'm not so lucky for Skarner. Ooh, Arthy Craft, very, very close to dying there. Great, great play so far by both teams. Vane and Soa going back to lane that bomb turret did fall. That is going to create a discrepancy in the gold. Uh, VV Gaming does have a 1k advantage right now. And in case people are wondering, I mean, that's pretty how you basically win a game in League of Legends is you get ahead in one of two things or both, and technically one comes with the other. You get ahead in gold, which gold lasts to the end of the game until you max out items, and then you have levels, which lasts until everybody else hits level 18. So if you can Levels actually make a huge difference. Like the advantage in levels will make a huge difference. Just life totals that naturally go up and skill power and damage from abilities that way. But the other way is just gold, just buying better items. Going back and buying at correct times so far and whatnot. So spent gold. Spent gold, which is more important. If you're storing up gold, that's not actually being used to increase your advantage. But spent gold versus uh, uh, versus levels as well, well is uh, how you win League of Legends. Get ahead in levels, get ahead in gold. And generally, you will win. There's a bunch of other stuff to go that's pretty simplified, but those are the two <laughs> things you want to do to get an advantage. Yeah, Assuming there's basically fundamentals and mechanics. Yeah. Lee Sin, ooh, going for that Q. They were ready to jump in on Mega Zero. Maybe they're going to back out here. I like watching this top battle. It's like two. Sword, it's hot. Big sword on big sword action. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, mine's big, I swear. Let me pop my ult. I'll show you. I'll prove it. I just love the trades. This is constant trading. I think Trinomir at this point is coming out a little bit ahead just because he has crit advantage and just natural heal. I think Riven was support, though, and ha has the potential to come back on it. But, ooh, see, both teams collapsing onto Dragon right now. Pink Ward, actually, they're collapsing because Pink Ward was just put down. So now we have a 4v4 coming in from both sides. Now, will they pick one side and go? That is the key. <laughs> Double diamond missing that lead shackle again. Trying to get the team a second now. He needs to come in and pop his ult. He's just going to stay backed out. This is not good. VV Gaming going down. Soraka in a lot of trouble. Soraka is definitely going to go down. Lands that shackle, but a little bit too deep in. And you know what? I think <laughs> you got to hit... The, well, one, you have to hit the initial shackle. Second... You have to decide right away if you're going to engage. If they decide they're going to engage. Graves doing great dodging here. Trying to get aggro onto Cassiopeia from that turret, but it's not going to go. Instead, it's going to stick onto Skarner, getting that last, that first hit. So great coordination, actually, by BG9. But really, you had to decide at that point if you are going in or not. If they decided they were going in, then Morgana had to go in right away and pop her ult. Follow up that shackle no matter what happened. And they all sucked in, so it would have been effective, but... Uh, as you can see now, she's low on mana, trying to clear this out. Could have seen a really aggressive vein play there if she rolled in Condemned, but that's being too dangerous. Instead, she's going to play the safe, smart play and pick up a turret. And now, uh, no ward again for Silsoul. So he's not going to see this vein coming up, and this Condemned uh, Chicken Dance is not going to be good for his health. Again, he doesn't play... Uh, he does not play a flash, so he's not going to be able to use that to get out of this. He's going to take way too much damage. Waiting for the last... There's no way he's getting out of this. Team heal. Wait, no, but Vayne's passive is too good at chasing down, and there he's going to go down. If it's at the point where you have to run away from a Vayne, you've pretty much lost. <laughs> Unless you have a lot of support. So right now, VV Gaming, you know, this is the first game where we've really seen them behind. So, I mean, this is the really test of any team at a high-level competition or that's coming up is you have to find out how you do when you play from behind. I mean, a lot of these teams, as good as you are, if you play a lot and you play against people that you're better than, you te you get this tendency to just play from ahead, being ahead all the time, and you don't know how to play from behind. So this is this is good practice for VV Gaming. This is a good test of, their, of how good of a team they are. They're not really that far behind, but they are behind. So how do they adjust their gameplay? What adjustments will we see? Normally, they're the one with all the turrets down in the jungle advantage. So how do they play when the other team has all their turrets down in the jungle advantage? And they're going to ping right away, spotting Trindomir. So they have good awareness of where he is, Trindomir. So popping and spinning is going to easily get out of this. Yeah, I'm looking at Lee Saren, and he's just really far behind. 
I mean, I have been noticing that too. Normally, you, what you want to have a Lee Sin is a very tanky hero, but uh, normally we've been seeing him play top a lot. But since he's in the jungle, he, he is a good jungle, but he didn't get all the ganks he wanted. There was great warding by Team BG9, so he wasn't able to get any of the ganks he wanted. Yeah, I mean, he's two levels behind Skarner. Uh, you know, he's only sitting on Merc Treads and a Wriggles. Um, you know, you know, Skarner has, you know, has at one point had two GP per 10 items. Um, yeah, there has been a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of interesting builds with that. Uh, a lot of builds and shifts more towards uh, GP, gold, uh, gold per 10 items, and then uh, basically using the runes, actually, and getting a large gold lead that way. But normally I see that in top players. Actually, my Malphite jungle has been running uh, GP per ten quints, and then I'll and I'll rock GP per five items or GP per ten items. Oh, cool! Yeah, that's uh... shout out to Dan Din, who I stole those builds from. Yeah, <laughs> Dan Din, very very solid player. Vayne is going to get loser vision, then decide to take the shortest path out of that and start trading with Graves. But Graves actually has Soraka back up heal. So he's going to be fine sticking in there, Cassiopeia. Moving right now, what I haven't seen them do, which uh, what I haven't seen BG9 do, which we've seen a great job, which part of this is is, v is credit to VV Gaming. VV Gaming is being very cautious about their jungle and keeping the uh, BG9 out of their jungle. But what we saw VV Gaming do is once they got these first turrets down, they in the game to the jungle advantage, they basically switched it up so that they had uh, a lot of wards in the enemy's jungle, and they're able. And BG9 hasn't been able to get those wards. I mean, they've got one ward of blue. But they haven't been able to get those wards into VV Gaming's jungle, and VV Gaming's been a good job of warding them out of this. And they haven't given a bottom turret, which is actually pretty important right now. Um, good thing to note is uh, Graves has stayed relatively even with their vein. Oh uh, yes, yes. Vein. so I mean, other than the kill, they're they're sitting at the same creep stats, so. And Axe Amanda doing a very, very good job against the Swag King, which I have to say I actually really like that name. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that is such a good ability against opposing ADs and just anybody. Like, the ability to make someone lose vision is just so good. Graves taking advantage of that very much. Let's see what uh, Morgana's going for. She has her Rabbitons, uh death cap. So we've reached that. Uh, Cassiopeia a little bit behind on uh, that death cap. She's actually getting out farmed a little bit. No, she's ahead in creep stats and kills. So uh, well, it looks like she rushed Will of the Ancients. Yes, quickly. she she doesn't have natural uh, spell base. <laughs> Ooh, Silso getting caught there by uh, by Skarner's pull right there. His alt getting ignited. Will Dev Diamond landing. Uh, a shackle when it counts, but it doesn't matter. I mean, just the DPS of Cassiopeia is just so, so obnoxious, especially with a blue buff. Such low cooldowns, and now this is probably where oh the no, debate's going to happen. Oh, no, flash by Oz. Oh, no. Didn't get over the wall. Getting caught out there trying to ward, and this should be a dragon for BG9 if they want it. They're going to turn around here. Cassiopeia does have blue. She can tear down this dragon so, so fast. She's spamming Twin Fangs, and they're going to start a battle... Uh, with uh, VV Gaming at the same time. So yeah, here we go. Uh, Trinimir getting in there. He has his ult. Can trade as much as he wants. Gonna get a little heal and some buffs from his team. Uh -huh. Oh, kick a little bit too early from Lee Sin. Lee Sin gonna go down here really, really low unless he can escape out, escape out of this. He's running down to the turret. Think about turning around. Throws in a Q just to try to help out. But it's not going to be good enough. Graves going down, jumping to his minion, trying to take the best path he can to escape this Sil Soul coming in. He's not really going to be able to help out his teammates too much unless he can burst down this Cassiopeia. Does he have his ult? There's his ult. Picks up the Cassiopeia. Now he's going to try to run down, slow down this, this Skarner as he runs through the jungle. Skarner going to pop his ult a little bit too late. Gets caught, slowed down. Good heal by uh, Soraka right there, allowing uh, Lee Sin to chase this out. If they can land, a, if he can land a Q, he should land a Q right there. There's the, we're going to see the cripple. We're going to see the cripple slow. Oh, there it is. Slow? So there slow. Just right as he gets under turret. Oh, Are they going to be able to get no. this? Meanwhile, the Swag King coming back, sneaking back, killing Morgana. Skarner going to pop his ult. He's chased down. He is going to escape. Amazing escape. I, f I don't even know how to pronounce that. We're going to say fe Fweg. Fweg. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Whatever. Good job by Skarner. 
escaping out of all that harass. And great job by uh, the Swag King actually picking up a kill onto Morgana. Rest of his team distracted. And ooh, so so you better not get spotted. Oh, he does get spotted. And instantly, the Swag King is on him, but he has no mana, so he's going to back off of this. With grave support, that surely would not be a good idea. Arcraft very quickly going to pick up this this uh, red buff, not allow his not allow his team to lose it. Trinomir going through, meanwhile going to steal the blue buff. Very smart play. Although Morgana not as blue buff dependent, it does help. It always does help your cooldowns, but she's she's not in uh, dire straits when it comes to uh, blue buffs. So the gore advantages is a uh, our deficit in this in this case is about five k in so, favor of so a healthy lead but not like no not out of hand yet and uh double diamond looks like he has his uh he has his chain vest and he's gonna be heading t uh for his uh, zonia's hourglass probably next so we can alt in zonia's hourglass and avoid all the reprisal attacks if he wants. The retaliatory. Good shackle by Double Diamond. Trying to stop them from killing that ward, but they're not going to be able to do it if if uh, Sona comes back there and lets them kill it. And apparently, no, they're not going to kill that ward. So uh, good, good job of you gaming, trying to trying to keep that ward, keep vision around Baron. That is important at this point. Soraka coming to lane does not have... Uh, oh, does Soraka does have an Oracle waiting to pop it at the correct time. Doesn't want to pop it too early. There's no point in popping it now before you have a chance. And she's going to pop it as she enters their jungle. Going to clear out their jungle, make sure that they are not warded. And lucky for them, they've been able to keep BG9 out of their jungle. And there has been a lot of wards there. Cassiopeia able to pick up blue. Very important buff for her as we move farther into this game. Skarner actually running Randuin's Omen and uh, Australia's Revelry. So he's going to be able to speed up his team and move in and slow down the enemy team. The king of the activated uh, speed buffs and debuffs. We're going to be doing a good job using that ward as best you can. Try to put some damage. Unfortunately, it's Trindomir who does not care too much about that. Silsil coming down in from top here. He is spotted by that ward. I have a feeling he's going to be grabbed by a scorpion if he gets too overzealous in there. And good job by VD Gaming, you know, just pressuring back the opponent team and trying to cut the war. But they see it now, and oh, there's the Shreyla's Revely. They gain that speed bonus. They're coming right away and eat that Soraka alive. So that Oracle is gone. They're going to turn directly onto Baron. So now they lose that important Soraka ult and sustain from the health. And now there's going to be a fight here. Now will Double Diamond land a good ult? That is the question. They're going to pull him away here. Just trying to pull him away from Baron. But uh, Swag King has to back off now. Still, still going way in, but just gets totally focused and blown up. And meanwhile, Skarner just really, really strong and tanky, just crushing in, wading into the enemy team and pushing them back. And now they can do Baron if they want to, if they turn around. And we're probably going to see that. Um, I'm wondering why Morgana didn't pop her ult there. Uh, I think they just they weren't. You know, again, it's you know it's a committal thing. I don't think. They kind of wanted to back up, and I don't think she... I don't know. I, I can't tell you why Double Diamond didn't do that. But I think it's a, partly just a committal thing. It's just wanted to get out first and didn't quite know when to blow it. And then when it was just... They all pretty much turned straight on the Soraka and stayed on Soraka. And then when the, by the, team, the time the team followed up, the only person there was Skarner. And if she pops her out just on Skarner, it's not going to actually kill Skarner. So I think it was one of those decisions where you hesitated for too long, and then there was no opportunity to use it defensively anymore. Effectively. Yep. So she's going to save it for this fight. For the next fight that's going to go down. And Swag King's going to can smartly flash and condemn away. Has a roll. Uh, she wants to gonna try to kite Silsoul. I don't know if that's the best idea. If he gets that dash stun, misses the dash stun. Now she's going to go against the wall. There's the Morgana ult. And Swag King's going to go down and lose his buff. No help for it. And no really advantage from BG9 to go steal a buff while that's going down either. So... Really just, I, I don't know why he turned around. It's just kind of not very solid play by uh, the Swag King right there. Well, she, uh, Swag King got screwed on uh, Team Heal. I don't know if you saw that. No, I did not. Yeah, I, um, Silsoul was about to go down. It was about one hit from dying. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Team Hill. 
Yes, Team Heal, best summer spell in the game. True uh, story. And, uh, oh, Mega Anders. Zero. Ugh. Mega Zero has entered uh, the late game stages of uh, Trindamir, which has to be pointed out. Which, uh, Trindamir, you don't. <sighs> you, and this is why you ban Trindamir, too. It's just really, really strong, hard to deal with, and very good sustain. You can push a lane very easily by himself. Meanwhile, Trix and his huge DPS is pushing down bottom lane. And they have picked up Dragon as well. So now Ward Advantage, Dragon Advantage, Buff Advantage, Gold Advantage, all to BG9. So it's their game to win at this point. Morgana caught, Double Diamond caught, way out of position. Uses Black Shield, flashes out. It's pretty safe. Still Soul in there again, a little bit too far. Will they be able to pick up Sona? Sona flashes away just in the nick of time. They're going to grab Morgana, pull her in, kill her. This is not looking good for VV Gaming. VV Gaming... Needs to pull it together and stop. I mean, it's getting a little bit out of hand. They lost a little bit of advantage. And now they're just not they are not playing the same. I think those habits from the earlier games, being ahead, being ha being able to just go in there by yourself, um, has really just worked out. And now we're going to see a surrender from VV Gaming. VV Gaming, good game. Unfortunate loss for them. Uh, great play by BG9, able to actually stop the run of VV Gaming, who looked like one of the favorites of the tournament. Yeah, fantastic game, uh, played by both sides. Yeah, I mean, really great play by both. And it again, was, it was pretty even all the way up through mid game. Uh, I think just like, a couple things got out of control. Uh, Lee Sin fell really far behind, and and then Skarner was able to just kind of get ahead and stay ahead. And, and then Sissel wasn't able to be as effective and dominant um, as he's been in the other games. Yeah, and you know, really, I mean, that might have been the bands. It might have, I mean, or not, not the bands, but uh, but this is the type of match like you'd love to see a best of three because yeah. I think VVV Gaming could, could say, hey, okay, we've never played these guys before. We don't even, we may not know who they are. We don't know them that well. But now that we've seen them play a match, all right, let's run it back. Let's let's play a bet. You know, let's see the game two. You know, and you know, maybe they'll come across them in another Go for All match, or they'll come across them in another online tournaments. But I really think that. A lot more could be, you know, we could find more. There'd be, there, you'd get a lot more out of seeing these two teams play in a best of three because it was fairly even matched. It was fairly skilled match. And uh, it would be great scrim practice, honestly. 